Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is the 5th of November and I'm obviously just coming in to open up this vlog. Um, I've got one book to talk to you about that I've DNF'd. <laughs> We're starting the month with a DNF. Let's hope we don't have a repeat of October. Um, a book that's arrived that I'm very excited about but doesn't add to my TBR. An order that I've put in that's arrived for something for me. Um, and a little bit of just general catch up. So, uh, the first week of the month has been busy. Um, I've been back at school. It's been a bit tricky because the weather here in the UK has been really, really bad. We've had Storm Kieran, which has meant that the kids have had to have break and lunch inside, which makes their behaviour worse because they've got a lot of energy and nowhere to put it. So it's been a bit of a challenging start to the term. We are still also waiting for Ofsted to descend at any moment. I'm really hoping it will happen in the next week. I just want to get it over with uh, before I get too tired by another term. Um, and we had parents evening for year seven this week, which meant that I was at school from 7.15 in the morning until about 7.30 at night. Left school, school site about half past seven. And then I was back in my classroom at 10 past seven on Friday. So I know I say it all the time, but I'm quite tired. Um, this weekend we've been celebrating the fifth anniversary of my channel. Thank you so much if you've taken part. It's been really, really fun. Um, the boys actually also got me this card, which says a round of applause just for you. I love it. Um, just and inside it just says, dear Vicky, well done and congratulations. We are both really proud of you for reaching five years on booktube with love, Gary and Charlie, which has just really made my day. Um, but yeah, it's been a really fun weekend. At the time of filming this, we finished the Sunday live show about an hour ago. Um, and I've just been doing uh, packing Etsy orders. So again, thank you so much if you've ordered bookmarks. Uh, we've now raised well over £100, like nearly £150 to add to the Book Trust Fund. Um, so yeah, that's going really well. Um, yeah, and just been doing a bit of life admin and I'm going to film this and then I'm going to get in the bath and try and relax a bit. It's been a nice weekend. It's been busy. Did a live show with Sh Chloe. I was going to say Charlotte. Chloe on Friday night. I will link all of these in the description in case you want to go back and watch them. Um, which was really a really good laugh and we watched my first ever video which I'll also link in the description for you which wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be but it still made me kind of cringe quite hard um so we did that on Friday night and then we did one sprint and then I was basically pretty much asleep live on the internet so we left it at that and then Saturday Charlotte and I were online for a about four hours, I think. Um, we did some bookish would you rather, and then we did some sprints. And then this morning, me, Amelia from Amelia, Amelia Barlow Books and Mel from a book fiend named Mel did some cozy reading sprints for a couple of hours. And that was just really lovely. Uh, but adult life admin has now kind of caught up with me. So I'm doing a few bits and pieces since we finished. And like I said, I'm gonna film this, get myself ready for work tomorrow, hang the laundry out that's just finished. And then I will be able to get in the bath and relax a little bit. And I will I will definitely finish another book this evening. But I wanted to film this clip now because of how dark it gets and how early it gets dark. I really need to sort out a ring light. So let's talk about the book that I DNF'd. Um, it was an audiobook, so I've got it on a slip of paper, but I will put a picture here. Um, and it was Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi, which I don't want to talk too much about because I know like it's so many people's like favourite book or favourite series from when they were a teenager. Um, it never really appealed to me and then I heard Rhiannon at Welsh Reader give it a really like a rave review um, and there was something about the way she described it I was like that sounds interesting so it was on Scribe so I was like that's fine I download that I got 30% in I got a decent chunk into it and I just the writing style just is not for me it was really like purple prose and the um, author kept describing people's eyes and I was like, if I hear one more description of somebody's eyes, I'm going to scream. So yeah, it just was not for me at all. Um, I just found it really slow. Not a lot was happening and the writing style just grated on me. So I DNF'd that one and stepped away. So that's the first book of the month, unfortunately. However, today I had a very exciting delivery because this arrived on my doorstep. Uh, so I was very lucky to get an arc of this months ago from book break. Um, and usually I would read ARCs the month before they're due out, so I would have read it in October. But I was so, so excited for this book that I read it immediately and it's already in my fa my stack of favourites for the year. And then I ordered myself a beautiful finished copy from Waterstones. Um, and this is, I haven't said, have I? It's Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. It is the prequel to Legends and Lattes, which was one of my favourite books of last year. I adored this. I gave it five stars. Um... I'll find the month when I read it because I can't remember and I'll link that vlog below. But I love these editions. 
this edition you've got the illustration there it's this beautiful navy blue and silver on the spine um i haven't checked the back and pages i think it's the same yes yeah, same um i just absolutely loved this story and i'm so so happy to have a finished copy to put on my shelves so it's very exciting and i also really like the spine it's going to look really good next to its sister so that's the bookish stuff and then i ordered some wax melts again from lauren i thought she'd um at the little bookish company which i'll also link in the description i thought she'd closed her shop and i'd actually even like unfollowed on instagram because i thought she closed it all down because she's doing a pgc turns out she hasn't i think she's just doing like one line at a time instead of multiple ones which is very exciting um so yeah i realized that her shop was still open i saw her post about it on instagram and i was like oh it's still there so i went and had a little look and i grabbed some halloween scented wax melts but like the ones that i've picked i'll be able to burn all year uh so yeah i bought <laughs> three and she also sent a little free gift which was really cute which is land of sweets which yes smells very very sweet so yeah i went for halloween ball which is toffee apple cake i haven't opened these yet let's do a quick sniff test i win candles i like either floral or food scented basically and anything with apple in i'm likely to really like oh my god that smells like something i want to eat okay she is not kidding with her scent descriptions then we've got monster mash which is pink party punch the decision now is which one to start with which is usually really difficult when it comes to lauren scents oh yeah that's sweet that smells um a little bit like snow fairy from lush like that one a lot and then the last one was witch's cottage i love these colors as well which is blueberry blueberry pumpkin patch now pumpkin can be a little bit hit and miss for me but with the blueberry oh yeah that is nice that's quite like a florally so yeah i'm excited for these i think we'll start with halloween ball because that smells like something i want to sit and eat i won't eat it but you know you know what i mean um so that is the kind of first clip really the first like opening of the vlog i'm feeling really tired i've been talking a lot over the last like three days because of being on live shows so i really need to go and calm uh get myself ready for tomorrow because next week is going to be another hectic week um we don't have any major events next week that's why i'm hoping ofsted will come next week and not following weeks uh but we'll see what happens and i will try and remember to film some b-roll so that you guys have got something to watch and as far as you're concerned i'll be back in a minute or two the 11th of november and jack's here hello he's like no absolutely not i'm not coming on camera <laughs> i've also got molly asleep up here or well, glaring at me but over here she was asleep a minute ago she's now glaring at jack so yeah it's all happening this morning okay i look <laughs> really rough so i do apologize um i'm gonna say what i always say when i come on to talk to you guys during term time i'm exhausted i'm so tired as you can see um yeah it's not been a bad week it's just been a week still no offset um but yeah it's just been a really busy intense week i did i used all of my free periods um this week for young carer stuff so i was talking to <clears throat> our young carers and getting to know them and working out what support they need so i just literally haven't had a minute to myself all week and i'm really feeling it today um it's saturday um it's just Gary and I this weekend and I was going to film all of my November content today but by the time you see this you'll know that I've taken a break till December which I feel really conflicted about. On the one hand I'm tired and I don't have the energy to 
sit and film a whole bunch of videos and then edit and upload them and deal with all of that and that's fine and if it was a friend of mine who was saying that to me I'd be like take a break it's absolutely fine but then at the same time like my channel's gained some really good momentum lately and I obviously want to keep that going so it's also kind of frustrating and I feel like weirdly guilty but anyway it's silly because I know you guys will immediately be telling you know saying me telling me I can't even speak probably telling me to take a break if I need it so that's what's happening um so yeah feels a bit weird but I'm also just my brain's so scrambled as you'll probably see in this clip um so oh Jack's back can you see oh no him and Sarah now chasing each other Jack Jack be a good boy I say him and Sab are chasing each other, it's mostly Sab chasing herself. Anyway, um, what's happened this week? Work stuff happened this week. The weather's been really, really wet, which makes work extra challenging. Today is absolutely beautiful, it's blue skies and sunshine. Gary's talking about taking the bike out, which would blast the cobwebs away, that's for sure, because it is fresh outside. Um, yeah, and I've read some books and I've also got two parcels, one of which arrived last Sunday. So if you sent me something and I've said nothing on social media all week, I'm really sorry. I've barely been online. I also would finally caved and ordered a ring light this week because filming in the evenings is completely impossible because of the light. Um, and it was supposed to come Tuesday and it's still not here. So I had planned to film a brief clip to open that parcel and then just everything conspired against me. So yeah, we're going to open those parcels in a minute. Um, I've got one book I DNF'd, one book I finished, two books I bought, <laughs> and one of those I've read. So let's talk about it. Let's talk, with, talk about the DNF first before I forget about it. So um, I DNF'd the audiobook of The Girl on the Walls. Cannot remember the author's name, but there'll be a picture here, if Editing Victoria remembers. Um, and this is a definite case of it's a me problem, not the book problem. Um, yeah, I picked this up because I was looking for something kind of gothic-y to be reading when I'm on my commute and it's dark <laughs> at the start and end of each day. Um, and this is beautifully written. I got a third of the way through. I was really enjoying the writing, but I just got bored and I didn't want to pick it up again. So I might at some point, like if I see it like secondhand or something or going cheap, I might pick it up physically rather than the audiobook. The audiobook narrator did a beautiful job. I just wasn't excited to read it. Um, and we're following, I can't remember what her name was, but we're following a young girl whose parents die in a car crash and she briefly goes into foster care and then runs away from foster care and goes back to the old family home where another family has now moved in and she starts living there without them realising. Um, and that's as far as I got um, in the story and that's kind of what the blurb says as well, so I don't give spoilers. So like I said, it was beautifully written. I just was finding myself putting Spotify on and singing all the way home. <laughs> rather than picking up my audiobook um and I just realized that I was just bored it was just too slow going for me it is beautifully written and like I said it's definitely a me problem rather than the book so yeah that was a DNF um then over the weekend or at the weekend I think I spoke to you on Saturday so yeah Sunday um I finished um Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett this was very kindly gifted to me by the lovely Michelle um who sent it to me when I was poorly I think yeah, because it says about um, get well soon. Um, I really liked this. This was really charming. I gave it three and a half stars, which is the first thing to say. And I feel like there's lots of people who might shout at me for that. Um, I loved this. Well, I enjoyed this, but I didn't love it, I think is the, is the thing. So we're following. I was literally looking for the character name. Hello. <laughs> we're following Emily who uh is making an encyclopedia of fairies and she's kind of like um an anthropologist but for fairies um and she arrives in this scandinavian village because there's specific fairies that she is trying to track down for encyclopedia um and she's setting up camp there for a couple of months to try and get closer to the hidden ones and then she's followed there by wendell bambleby who is somebody that she works with i think she's in oxford or cambridge um and he arrives as well much to her annoyance um and i really liked being in emily's head she it's never said on the page, but to me, it reads as if she is autism coded because she is highly intelligent and very focused on what she's doing. But she doesn't pick up on social cues and she finds people kind of baffling. And I really liked being in her head and it did definitely make me chuckle a few times. It's also really cosy. This is like the cosy academia rather than dark academia. And I really liked this style of writing um, and this kind of story. And I liked the relationship between her and Wendell. I thought it was fun. I did think the writing was a little bit simplistic um I'm not sure if this is a debut I think it is um 
Oh, no, it isn't. It's not a debut at all. Um, yeah, some of it just felt a little bit simple and there were some parts where I was slightly bored and sort of skim reading. But I enjoyed it enough to order the second one. Can't remember what that's, that's called either because my brain is just not in gear this morning. So I'm really glad I read this. This is a lovely, cosy um, start to the month. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. So thank you, Michelle, for that. It was very cute. And this cover is absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, it was fun. It was cute. I loved it. Then I read, no, then I bought a book. And then I have read the book this week. And that book was The Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Laurie Gilmore. So if you were if you were around for the readathon that I did last weekend, um, Charlotte was reading this while we were on sprints, I think, and talking about it. And a few people were talking about it in the chat. And I was so intrigued. I just ordered it. Um, and I've read it and I gave it four stars. I really, really liked this. We are following Jeannie, whose aunt um, gives her a cafe. Her aunt has been running this cafe in this new, in this um, little New England town. It's called Dream Harbour. Yeah, it's so cute. Um, and her aunt wants to go off and go traveling and all that kind of stuff and follow her bliss. And so she says to Jeannie, come and run the cafe and live in the flat above it after something has happened to Jeannie. So Jeannie arrives in this small town and one of the first people that she meets is Logan, who is this hot farmer. And it basically goes from there. Um, this felt, I think the reason I didn't give it five stars, it felt like Gilmore Girls fan fiction, particularly at the beginning. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just didn't feel particularly original. I did like how some of the themes were worked in. We get dual perspective between Jeannie and Logan and Logan's got his own issues going on. And I liked how that was resolved. There's a cat in it. Oh, focus. Focus, focus. No, it's not going to. Um, there's a little cat in it called Casper that I really liked. I love the found family. I loved the descriptions of food and all the stuff she's making in the cafe. Um, and it was just a really fun time. There's some nice spicy bits in it. I think the only reason I didn't give it five stars, like we didn't get great descriptions of the actual cafe itself. Like I wanted to watch her setting up the cafe. Maybe I just need to reread Legends and Lattes. Um, but I thought this was really fun. And I've even pre-ordered the next one, which doesn't even come out until I think like August or September next year, which is set in a bookshop. It's the Bluebell Bookstore, um, which is with two two like side characters from this one. And yeah, I just really enjoyed this. This was fun. It was exactly what I needed this week. I would definitely recommend it. And obviously it's set in autumn, sort of around Halloween. But I feel like it would just be good... I don't feel like you have to read it in October. Obviously, I read it in the start of November. I feel like it would just be good for any of the winter months when you need something a bit cute and cosy and a little bit spicy as well. So yeah, I enjoyed that one. So thank you, Charlotte. That was a great recommendation. And then a book I bought <coughs> that I didn't mean to, I'll explain why in a minute, um, is Stephen Fry's Heroes. So, <coughs> excuse me, the cough's still lingering. Um, I'm teaching myths and legends to my year sevens uh, currently. And it's always a really, really popular unit of work with the kids. But this year, the kids are like extra, extra excited about it. And Lily, one of the girls in my top set, look how cute this is, um, bought me a copy of this from home um, as a gift for me, bless her. Um, but the copy that she bought me wasn't very readable. It was really damaged. So um, she was really, she's really keen for me to read it, as are the kids, the other kids. So I just quickly jumped on Amazon. This was going cheap. So I quickly ordered it. It's a lot bigger than I was expecting. It's like 450 pages, although I don't know how much of it is like um, references and stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is The Mortals and Monsters Quests and Adventures. I didn't plan to read this, um, but it's now on my TBR and I need to read it this month, really, because the kids are very excited to know what I think. Um, so yeah, that is a book that I bought and you will probably see me review it very shortly. And then we have two parcels. Like I said, one of these arrived last Sunday and it sat in my bedroom so that I could open it on camera. So I do apologise to whoever sent me this that I didn't open it quicker and come and find you on social media to say thank you. And then the other one arrived last night. So let's open this up, these up together and see what these are. So usual disclaimer, you don't have to do it. I don't expect it. It's really kind. It does make my day. But yeah, there's no, absolutely no pressure. That pretty much sums up my whole week. Um, there's absolutely no pressure at all or expectation that you guys will do this for me. Okay, right. Let's see what this is. Let's see if I can get a gift note first. Who is this from? Oh, it's from Joe and Albie. I should have known, really. Five years on BookTube. What a great achievement. Achievement. Thanks for all the recommendations from Joe and Alfie. That's so nice. Right, let's see which book she went for. Oh, great choice, Joe. Okay, this is Little Deaths by Emma Flint. Um, Emma Flint wrote 
other women, which is, you can see this stack here, here is my favourite books of the year so far stack. Um, and that was the first book that I've read from Emma Flynn. And this was her debut, I think. I am excited to read this. Wow, the text is tiny. I am really, really, really excited to read this. Let's read the back. I don't even know what it's about. I just know that it's Emma Flynn and I want to read it. It says, Mother, New York, 1965. One hot morning, Ruth Malone wakes to discover her two young children are missing. After a desperate, ser desperate search, the police make a horrifying discovery. Mistress. It's every mother's worst nightmare, but Ruth Malone is not like other mothers. Her perfect ma perfect makeup, provocative clothing, drinking habits and string of affairs arouse suspicion. Murderer. Tabloid reporter Pete Woniek at first believes the neighbourhood gossip, but as his fascination with Ruth blooms into obsession, he learns there are two sides to every story. This sounds so good. Do I need to pick this up now? Maybe. I've only got like three books left I think you can see my stack here I've got four books left in my kind of November TBR so we can probably fit this in this month as well thank you so much Joe and Alfie of course that is an excellent choice and so so kind okay let's see what this one is I can't lie there's like two two things in here which is just even more ridiculously generous but let's see yeah it is two books <laughs> who's done this right let's have a little look Oh, it's from Mary Claire. So she, they say, I just want to say thank you for your videos. Your reading month videos have given me lots of company over a tricky couple of weeks. Thank you for your hard work from Mary Claire. Thank you so much. That's such a lovely thing to do. I know. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling guilty for taking breaks. But anyway, there's lots of content for people to watch. And I'll have recommended other videos as well on my um, feed. Okay, let's see what you've gone for. Okay. Oh, this is the next Miss Marple. Agatha Christie, a murder is announced. How exciting. An ordinary village, a shocking announcement. One morning, the villagers of Chipping Cleghorn wait to find a strange notice in their papers. A murder is announced and will take place on Friday, October 29th at Little Paddocks at 6.30pm. Suspecting this is a joke, they gather for some evening entertainment. Then a gunshot is heard. In desperation, the police turn to an old lady whose hobbies are gardening, gossiping and solving murders. After all, old ladies know better than anyone exactly what goes on in quiet English villages. I'm so excited. That's a great choice. Thank you very, very much. Let's put that on the stack there. It's a growing stack. And then this one. Oh, yes. The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I've read a couple of Riley Sagers. Actually, I think I've read one Riley Sager and really enjoyed it. So I'm excited to see what this is like. And this I've seen on quite a few people's um, like favourite list of the year. Sorry if you can hear kids outside. The windows are closed. Um... Yeah, so what lies beneath the surface will always remain hidden. Casey Fletcher has escaped to her family's lake house for peace and quiet to mourn her late husband. When the glamorous couple across the lake catch her attention, she's mesmerised. They're perfect, just like Casey and her husband used to be. But is anyone what they seem? Is Casey as perfect as she think thinks? She has a detective sat at her kitchen table. She has a man bound and gagged upstairs. She is about to uncover a dark truth so life-changing that nothing will ever be the same again. Oh my gosh, I'm going to read all of these immediately. I feel like my TBR is changing <laughs> rapidly this month as this month goes on. Okay, so that's the update. I am going to go... I'm still getting judged over here. Do you ever feel like you're being stared at? Hi, Mo. <laughs> um, I am going to go and get the few bits done that I can with the energy I've got. And then I'm going to take my own advice, put my feet up and get some rest. <laughs>
It's the 19th of October and you can already tell from the fact that I'm in my pyjamas and I've got my hair scraped up that I'm tired. <laughs> my voice is going, I think I've got another cold, blah blah blah, all the usual stuff. <clears throat> um, also, as I came to set up uh, this, to film this clip, this happened. So that's good, it's completely like sheared off the one of the legs. So I've literally balanced on a giant stack of books, so I'm really hoping that this is A straight and B doesn't fall over mid-filming. Uh, so yeah, I've got um, some updates to give you. Pretty much all of the B-roll that you just saw was from <clears throat> last weekend, a little bit of this week, and then a little bit of yesterday. Because as you can see, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is going, we are having a birthday this weekend. Well, uh, Charlie's turning 14 on the 28th, uh, but because of his hectic social calendar, um, this weekend was his official like family birthday. And then he's with his mum next weekend. And then the following weekend, which is at the start of December, um, he's got his best friend over for a sleepover. They're going clay pigeon shooting and then they're going they're gonna have a sleepover, so that'll be fun. But like this weekend has been like his like family birthday. So that's been really lovely. My mother in law made the most amazing cake, which I put in the B roll. Uh so yeah, yesterday was just really busy with all of that stuff, but really nice. Um the boys have gone to a jujitsu um tournament today. <clears throat> so uh I was supposed to bring Marking home and then didn't. <laughs> Uh, so I'm just like getting Christmas stuff ready. So like writing out lists of gifts that need buying and sorting out Christmas cards and all that kind of stuff um, today. And then trying to have a little bit of downtime this afternoon. Uh, Cause yeah, it's been, it's been another really challenging week at work. Ofsted still haven't come, um, but we think it's gonna be this week, but we thought that last week, so we don't know if it will be. And then this week we've got celebration evening as well. So I'll be at school until like nine o'clock on Wednesday. So it's really been doing the cap flap keeps going. Um, so yeah, as always, it's just been a lot of everything and I'm really tired. But I do have some updates for you. I didn't come just to like whinge at how tired I am. I think this might be a little bit high, this angle, but we're going to have to go with it. First of all, my ring light arrived. So one of the things that I need to do today is figure this out. I will put the link for the one that I bought in the description in case anybody's interested. But I'm hoping that this will mean that I could film like when I come to filming um, like my normal sit down content, I won't have to just do it very first thing in the morning if that works, especially because like it's now like 12 o'clock and already the light's going. I mean, this is OK here, but like over where I would film normally, it would be a bit dark. So, yeah, I bought that one. Charlotte recommended it. We'll see if I can figure it out. Um, and also my mum sent me an advent calendar. If you saw my October wrap up, which I'll put in the description if I haven't already, um, I bought myself the mini jam one, which I'm really excited about. But mum also sent me this skincare one, which is the, how do you say it? Le Occitane, maybe? Um, and it's very pretty. It smells amazing. And I'm very excited to open both of those because I'm such a spoiled brat um, next month. So yeah, mum sent me that. I just thought I'd show you that. And then I finished two books. My reading this so far this month is kind of mid. It's been fine. Um, yeah, I liked the Pumpkin Spice Cafe book that I told you about in the last clip. That's definitely my favourite so far this month. But I'm just feeling kind of meh about my reading. But I think that's more of a reflection of the mood I'm in than anything else. But yeah, I finished two books. So I finished um, The List by Yomi Adegoki. Um, this was gifted to me for my birthday by the lovely Laura. Um... And in this, we're following a couple who are kind of influencers. They've got like minor celebrity status and they're getting married. You can hear the dishwasher beeping now. <laughs> you can also hear the washing machine. I've just realised. So sorry for all of that. Um, yeah, they're getting married in a month's time and they wake up one morning. They wake up separately after a night out and the girl, the woman looks at her phone and the list has appeared, which is a list of sexual predators within the entertainment industry. And her fiance is on there. Um, and he's named as someone who has sexually assaulted someone, I think, or harassed someone. Um, and this follows them. You get both perspectives in the countdown to their wedding with them trying to decide, well, her mostly trying to decide whether or not she's going to go through with the wedding. Does she believe him? He's denying all knowledge. Um, and it's going back and forth and you're finding out more and more about the couple as, as the book goes on. And that's all I'll say. I gave this three and a half stars. I, this is a debut, I think. Let me just double check that. Yes. Debut novel. Um, I would definitely read more from the author. I think the first 100 pages I was really gripped. I didn't know what I thought. I was going back and forwards. But the problem I had with it is that I didn't like either one of the couple. So I didn't really care if they got married or not. And that's like the central pull of is whether or not this relationship is going to survive. And I kind of didn't care enough 
So yeah, I gave it three and a half stars. I thought it was clever. It definitely throws up some really interesting questions. Um, massive content warnings for sexual assault, rape, suicide, um, alcohol and drug misuse, um, discussions of sexual assault and rape, um, PTSD, um, depression. It's really windy out there. What is going on? My whole house is shaking. Um, so yeah, it's really dark. So check content warnings. I thought it was cleverly done. It just didn't hook me all the way in. So I gave it three and a half stars. Then I've read the book that I showed you in the last clip. I think I showed you in the last clip. Um, and that is Heroes by Stephen Fry. This is literally looking at, I think there's like 10 different heroes that he looks at. One, two, three, four. You don't care how many there are. Five, six, seven, seven different Greek heroes. Um, I like this. I gave this four stars. Um, it's very, you can definitely tell that it's Stephen Fry who's written this. You can kind of, you can hear his voice in your head all the way through. Um, I liked some of the footnotes. I thought they were really funny and just gave it this really, um, kind of, uh, sarcastic tone to it that I enjoyed. I didn't love that all, everyone in here except one is male. They're all male heroes except for one. Um, and I didn't really learn anything. I feel like if you're like at a beginner level for Greek myths and legends and stuff, this would be a good one. Um, I can see why my kids at school wanted me to read it because it's some of the stuff that's in this we're doing um, in lessons. Um, but yeah, it was okay. I gave it four stars maybe because it was Stephen Fry. Maybe that's why I've given it a four. Should it be a three? I did quite enjoy it. Um, and it was, a, it was an easy read. It is thick, but the last like 100 or so, well, 50 or so pages is like, is the um sources and stuff and it has got a really big font so it's quite a quick easy read so yeah i gave that four stars right now i am off to make lunch get ready for work tomorrow hang the laundry out that's clearly nearly done um and then have a bath and just try and relax a little bit because at the moment i feel a bit like a hamster constantly running too fast on a little wheel It's the 25th of November, which means it's a month today to Christmas and I have so far done nothing in terms of Christmas prep. So I need to get on that this weekend. It's been another tough week. I don't think I really filmed much B-roll, if any. Um, we had a celebration evening on Wednesday, which was really nice. A lot of our year 11 leavers came back. So it's really nice to catch up with a load of them and see what they're up to and how they're all doing now that they are post school. Uh, but that was a particularly long day. I was in my classroom at quarter past seven and I didn't leave sight in the morning and I didn't leave sight until quarter to eight in the evening. So it was a particularly long day. Still no Ofsted and I had an anxiety attack on Thursday lunchtime. Um, and it was the first one I've had for months, like since the summer. Uh, but I just, yeah, I'm just really tired and I've got no shield up at the moment if you work in a school you'll know what I'm talking about and I had a really bad interaction with one of the kids in my tutor group in the morning and it just looped around and around in my head all day and I wound up with an anxiety attack um but because cover is so busy at the moment because lots of teachers are off sick uh I had to basically pull myself together I wanted to just go home crawl under the duvet and not move um but instead I taught year nine drama and then bottom set seven English um which is not what I would recommend doing because I'm still feeling shaky a couple of days later, but needs must sometimes. And I am proud of the fact that I managed to finish my working week, but yeah, I am taking it very gently with myself today and tomorrow. Uh, so it's the weekend again, which is why I'm chatting to you. It is beautifully frosty outside. I'm so happy it's this weather. Um, we are going to Bath Christmas Market. We're going to Bath to meet up with my brother and sister-in-law for a, a cup of coffee and a piece of cake, but we're meeting in Waterstones Cafe. Oh yes, I've got my book earrings on, if you couldn't see. Yes, I love these. Um, and then Bath Christmas Market also started this week, so we're gonna go for a little mooch around there. And then this afternoon, Gary's going off to see a friend of his, and I'm gonna come home and get on my laptop and sort Christmas out, because I need to order some presents ASAP. Um, and I'm also hoping to, uh, like most of the um, Black Friday deals are running till Monday, so I'm hoping I can get some bargains as well, because I, I seriously need to get on it. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. 
I've got some bookish stuff to talk about. The first one is an audiobook that I read, um, and it's a very popular adult fantasy romance that features dragons. However, I've chosen not to review it and not to rate it because the author has some political views that I do not agree with. I'll put a link in the description to an article that I read and found quite helpful um, in case you were interested. But um, if you if you look at my Goodreads and my uh, story graph, you'll see that I read it. I read the book and then I should have done it the other way around, then um, looked at the author and somebody, I think it was Tony, but I'm... I can't quite remember. Some kind person had commented on my Goodreads when I started reading the book. Oh, this person has some political opinions that are problematic and you might want to look into, but I didn't see it. I'm not very good at checking my Goodreads notifications. I just literally like go in, log my books and log out again. So I hadn't seen it. I hadn't seen their comment. And then I looked and I was like, wow, okay, that's not... That's not an author I want to support, but I'd already finished the book. So anyway, like I said, I left it unrated on Goodreads and Storygraph. Um... And I'm not going to talk about it any further, but it is a book that I read this month. Okay, then this morning I finished um, Let's Play Murder by um, Cassia Lupo. Um, this was creepy. <laughs> um, this follows four teenagers. This is YA horror, I guess, or like horror adjacent, um, who get pulled into a virtual reality game. Sorry, Sav's just here, so if you can hear her shifting about. She's currently having a bath, and I would flick the camera around to show you, but I'd probably get demonetized by YouTube. <laughs> anyway, um, we're, yeah, we're following four teenagers who get sucked into this virtual reality game, um, and it's a murder mystery. They've got to try and work out uh, who committed a murder, and then they, one by one, start dying. And that's all I'll say, really. This was fun. I gave it three and a half stars. I thought some of it, I thought it was a little bit long for a start. It's like nearly 400 pages. Um, so I thought it was a little bit long and parts of it were a little bit draggy and the twist at the end I saw coming. But there are a couple of decent jump scares in here, um, which I enjoyed. And I was saying last month or the night that I really wanted a creepy book. This turned out to be a really good creepy read. It was fast paced and it was easy when my brain was struggling on the struggle bus this week. Um, so I would recommend it. I'm going to put this into my classroom library once my mother-in-law's read it. Um, and yeah, it was fun. I'm glad I gave it a go. Um, not really loads to say about it, to be honest. It was creepy. I liked it. It was a book that I read. Three and a half stars. Um, and then I've had some book mail from the lovely people at Book Break. They have sent me an arc of Song of the Huntress by Lucy Holland. This comes out in March, 21st of March. Um, and she's the author of Sister Song, which I read... I want to say last year, possibly the year before, and really enjoyed. I'm also obsessed with this cover and it's got Glastonbury Tour on it. Um, and it just, I'm not going to read you the whole back, but it just says, a must read must read for fans of Cersei and Gen Jennifer Saint. Song of Huntress recasts the folklore behind the wild hunt into a dark feminist fantasy set amid the, amidst the, uh, I can't speak today, amidst the legends and beauty of ancient Britain. So yeah, I'll be reading that in February. Um, so thank you to the people at Book Break. That will go into my 2024 stack of proofs of arcs so yeah i'm really excited for this and then finally the lovely sean um messaged me on instagram and said that she'd bought a pack of stickers and there were some cat ones in there and did i want them and i was like yes please so she very very kindly sent them to me and look how much this looks like my bookshelf with my cats on so there's that one here's here's one of my cats coming now hello <laughs> she wants to go out i'll let her out in a second we've got this one I just love like the pastel. Oh, there's also this one, a girl in love with cats and books. Um, I just really love the pastel like color scheme. So there's that one. And then this little rose one as well. So yeah, I might put those on my teacher journal, my teacher diary, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, but that was a very nice little thing that happened this week. For now, it's a little bit early for me to be getting festive. I prefer, I'm more of a first of December type person, but quite honestly, I've had such a rubbish mental health week I am ready to get festive so um I will film some b-roll uh, but we are off to Bath to see the brother and sister-in-law have a little mooch maybe maybe buy a book at least browse some books and hopefully kickstart some Christmas spirit
And those are almost all of the books I read in the month of November. It's now the start of December. As you can see, we've got advent calendars and stuff up here. And as usual, I'm coming in to wrap up the wrap up late. I've also taken my glasses off because hopefully you've noticed an improvement in the light quality because I've got my ring light set up. And if I don't, I have this very annoying green circle and I don't know how to deal with that. But also I've been sat here for a few minutes and my head's already hurting because I didn't have my glasses on. So maybe for this clip, we will just part with it. It is super annoying. Anyone that films who wears glasses, what do you do? How do we deal with this situation? So, oh, also I've got Jack here. The girls are also, there he goes. Um, the girls are also around. I've got the washing machine on, the dishwasher's on. It's kind of chaotic in here today. I'm not really in the mood to film, if I'm totally honest, but this video needs to go up tomorrow. So I need to film. And I do want to finish this vlog off and post it and stuff. I haven't posted any content in three weeks. Well, it will be a month, I think, by the time you see the video. And it feels super weird. I've really, really missed having like comments coming in and all that kind of stuff. Just the interaction that you get when you're posting regular videos. I'm going to take my glasses off just for a minute. Um, yeah, so I've really missed that this month. Um, but I'm also not really in the mood to film, so I don't know what to do with that. The boys... This is for the December vlog, really. But the boys are out this afternoon, which is why I'm filming now. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do all my December content. I'm not. <laughs> I can already tell. Um, and hopefully next weekend I will feel a bit more like it. Anyway, for November, I've got two books I finished, one I DNF'd and one book that I bought. And then we'll do snacks. So uh, the first book that I finished, the next book that I finished was uh, The Devil You Know Encounters in Forensic Psychiatry uh, by Dr. Gwen Ads Adshead and Eileen Horn. Um, Dr. Adshead is uh, a forensic psychiatrist um, and it's her telling the story of 12 of her patients um, that she's had over the years. And I'm assuming that Eileen Horn is the one that's like taken her words and turned them into this book. Um, also very shiny. You see it ring light. Mm, it helps with being able to film at different times of the day. I'm filming like mid afternoon. I usually film first thing in the morning, but shiny books and glasses. I don't know if I even look weird without my glasses on these days. Anyway, I feel like this clip is going to be super rambly, so I do apologise. This was really interesting. I like this a lot. I feel like if you liked things like The Prison Doctor, which is a series I read and I think I gave most than three stars, I felt like this was much better written. I gave this four stars. Um, I found it fascinating. She looks at, she tells you the stories as if you're sat in the room with her and her patient or client. Um, there are massive content warnings for this. I'm going to leave a link um, in the description to a website that shows you the content warnings for books. So you can go and look it up there. But there are some very, very dark topics discussed in this book because she is dealing with people. She works primarily in prisons um, and in places like um, Broadmoor Hospital. So she is dealing with people who have committed horrific crimes. Um, and it was just fascinating. It was a fascinating look at her job. It was a fascinating look at how people's brains work. Um, it was very, very dark. Like I said, looking at a lot of dark topics, looking at themes of things like redemption. Um, and, you know, is somebody born evil or are they made that way by circumstance? I'm going to have to put my glasses back on because my head's already hurting. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed this. Gave it four stars. I feel like this was gifted to me for my birthday. Yes, it was. Uh, it was gifted to me by, oh yeah, the lovely, lovely Lisa. So yeah, I really enjoyed that one. If you're looking for non-fiction, this is my non-fiction November offering. Um, that is accessible, easy to read and fascinating. I would definitely recommend this one. It's probably one of the better non-fictions I've read this year. So yeah, really enjoyed that. Then I read, I will put a picture up here uh, because I read The Good Samaritan by John Mars. I read it on audio and it was narrated by Elizabeth Nolden. Um, it was a full cast narration, but I feel like if you know the names of the other narrators, it's a bit of a spoiler because all I'm going to say about this book is we're following a woman who works on a suicide um, like hotline that people phone if they're feeling suicidal um, and she's a serial killer. Like she's encouraging people to die rather than trying to stop them or like talking to them. Um, and it's about her and it's one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever read. I don't usually like reading from unlikable characters. She's the one of the most unlikable characters I've ever read, like even worse than like Rhiannon and Sweet Pea because there's no humour at all in this book. It's, it's very, very dark. And again, please check for content warnings. Um, and I'm not really going to tell you any more about the story because you just just go into it. That's all I knew going into it. And it is quite a ride. I really like John Mars for thrillers and dark fiction. Um, I gave this four out of five stars as well. 
and the audiobook had me hooked like I was listening I think I said this to you before I know I'm really enjoying a book on audio when I listen to it at home rather than just in the car and I was listening to it every second I got um yeah it was very very dark I couldn't give it the full five I think the ending wasn't as strong as the as the beginning um and it went in a slightly cliched direction I thought um but overall I liked it it was a really solid book gave it four stars so there's that one and then the book that I DNF'd I feel bad because it was birthday present um and there goes Jack and it's one that I know a few of you were like keen for me to read because you'd really enjoyed it but I got 100 pages in and I just wasn't connecting with it and I didn't want to pick it up and for me that is the sign to DNF a book and that is Killingly by um Catherine Butner. I mean yeah shiny um beautiful cover I was just bored this is historical fiction in which a young girl goes missing um from her women's college I think it is um and they're trying to work out where she's gone like she literally vanishes into thin air and you get a few different perspectives and like I said I got 100 pages in there were too many characters with similar names or people who had multiple names and I just wasn't tracking and there was a you know a twist that I'd seen coming a mile away and it was just like I don't need another like 250 pages of this so unfortunately for me it just didn't work and I decided to DNF that one okay let's talk stats so November has been a very meh month as you'll see from these stats it's been my worst reading month of the year in terms of amount of books and the quality of the books I've read. Everything I've read has been fine. Um, I've had three DNFs. So I DNFed Shatter Me, The Girl on the Walls and Killingly. Um, and it's all just been a bit meh. And I think that's been reflected in how I felt in general. And there's been some really nice bits of this month. Like Charlie's birthday obviously was a massive highlight. Going to the Christmas market with my husband and my brother-in-law and his girlfriend was a real highlight. But everything else has just been a bit trudgy. Like I've just been trudging from one thing to the next. I'm really hoping December is going to be better. Obviously we've got Christmas in December and all of that stuff. So yeah, these are not my best stats. Okay, so number of books read. I read eight. Like I said, that is way um most definitely my least read of the year pages read was 3148 which is 104 uh, uh, four per day average star rating was 3.81 so it wasn't terrible but like i said i haven't been really excited about anything i've read this month i haven't picked a favorite read because none of the books i've got them here so i read this stack Ugh. i read this stack plus the two audiobooks and Yes, I enjoyed the Pumpkin Spice Cafe. Yes, I liked Heroes. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies was okay. But like none of them are like fit to join the stack up there. My books of the year stack. Um, and none of them I'm like really enthused to recommend to you guys. So I'm not going to have a favourite book for November. Which means one of my uh, kind of honourable mention books can go into my top books of the year. Which you guys will be seeing in January. So yeah, there's no favourite read for this month. Which, you know, kind of tells you what a month has been like and then my most disappointing was actually the list because I thought this was going to be a five star read and what did I give it 3.5 yeah I gave it a 3.5 so for me that that is disappointing uh so that was my most disappointing my TBR stands at 39 and also just realized I didn't tell you about a book that I bought this came in this is a demon's guide to wooing a witch by Sarah Hawley this is a companion a companion novel to a witch's guide to fake dating a demon, which I read earlier in the year, and that did make it into my top reads of the year. Spoiler for that video. Um, and this is a companion novel, so we're following uh, friends of the original couple, and I haven't even read the back because I really don't want to know, um, but I'm excited to pick this up. Probably, it's probably going to be in the spring, I think. But yeah, I loved the first one so much, and I loved the writing style and all of the like naughty bits really work for me and all of that stuff I just really liked it so I pre-ordered this I totally forgot about it and then came home to it this week so yeah that's the book that came in which I forgot to tell you about I told you this clip was going to be a mess um and then yeah my TBR stands at 39 books so we've gone up yeah we've gone up three books from October which is fine and then for balancing the books I have six reds so two of the audios didn't count because they went on my physical TBR plus three DNF so nine out I bought in 10 books this month whoops so obviously I had one brought in one more brought in than read and year to date I have read one more book than I have hauled so let's see if I can do a bit of work on that one in December and try and uh, widen that gap because I suspect I will be gifted books Christmas from friends and family I'd be amazed if I wasn't okay so let's finish off this very messy 
clip. Yeah, I don't know what to do about this. Do I put the light higher than me? Maybe, I might try that. Um, you don't need to know that. Uh, so, I apologise for <laughs> this vlog. I feel like it's been very messy. But we're going to hope December is better. I've already started on the December one. And I've already got some like cute festive stuff happening. So hopefully you will enjoy that. If you made it to the end of this video, what should we do? Um, I don't know. I don't even have a favourite read to um, There's a Dishwasher Beeping. Told you. Uh, to pick up on. Okay, let's do... Um, let's do a sword emoji. Because I'm very excited about this book. And there's a sword on the cover. And... Let's go with that. So if you made it to the end of the video, leave me a sword emoji just to let me know that you got to the end. I very much appreciate you if you did. Uh, please subscribe if you like more of this messy chaos. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.